Good morning. Welcome to Morning Review. This is Kim Watson speaking for Easy Trader on Wednesday, the 6th of April. Okay, looking at the pound dollar first as it's on the chart already here. As you can see, we've, we've started breaking out of this near term uh, uh, trend support line here. It, uh, it had a nibble yesterday, but it's seeing a bit of follow through at the moment. Uh, I'm just looking for some sort of horizontal support and looking at where we could be running to. Um, I think really at this, the, the rate it's coming off at the moment, we could be seeing it running down to the 1.4 area potentially. Um, it carries on in this vein, which is the next sort of level of support. We've run, through, run out of near term support here. Looking at the shorter time frames, looking at the hourly time frames, well, this is really, I mean, it does it does look bearish now. Um, it's got an untouched pivot above, so any double bottom here may just provide us a bit of support to get back. But it's, uh, as I said, there's very little in terms of other support now. In fact, actually, that double bottom, I'm just looking at from a four hourly perspective, um, let's get a better picture. Might be a little bit more significant. There were some previous lows uh, across here on the 28th, so it may just have enough uh, enough there to uh, give us a significant or enough, sufficient support. But uh, a break of those lows, well, we could just be continuing to uh, shove on down. Okay. Um, looking then at uh, and, and in terms of targets to the downside there then well obviously yesterday's lows were near enough there but that 1.4 area of 141 actually in the near term uh, would would be logical let's look at the euro dollar so we've seen this continued sort of uh, this morning um, sell-off point, we seem to see a bit of a retrace in the afternoon. You end up with these hang hanging man type uh, candles. Um, it's looking, um, it's hold it, hold it, hanging in there. <laughs> but uh, uh, to me, it, I still think we were sort of good possibility of coming down, catching this weekly pivot at. Uh, 13.27 so we'll just watch and look at what's happening here in the short term um, as choppy as anything is it really the answer in terms of how these days have been going although that isn't to say we haven't had reasonable trends through those periods so um, currently is really looking for today's S1 at the, the way things are rolling at the moment um, initially and maybe Maybe today we get down to the walls that weekly pivot, but uh, seems a little bit elusive. There's very little in the way of news to jog anything up today until this evening, and we have got the FOMC minutes, which uh, might uh, uh, might have a nugget or two in there that hasn't been said. But in the main, most of the, we've had quite a few speakers since the meeting, and generally they've got their message across. So uh, dolly yen. Uh, well, this, this is broke yesterday's uh, broke the previous lows rather quite quite clearly yesterday, and it does look like it's on a mission to continue to the south side. Um, just a bit of consolidation on the four alleys where we sit. Um, if this just breaks down, well, could be heading off to that 109.74 area. So um, do, does look rather weak. There's a, decent point of a trend line across sitting across there which is probably the line in the sand and there's horizontal support sitting across there as well so you just need to watch for a break of that and that could see us uh, coming off there as I said towards that S1. The Aussie dollar, the Aussie dollar again it's just been sort of uh, selling off it's in the main been seen as slightly stronger in the Asian sessions but uh, it's uh, it came off strongly yesterday uh, in the first part of the session there and just well, tracked around a little bit from there. To me, now it's back into its eight moving action for hourly eight. It does look like it uh, 
potentially could roll over again, but I just really would prefer to see it running below this trend line that sits there, which sort of ties in quite nicely with the uh, 21 moving averages. So if it starts breaking that point, well, it gives us a good opportunity to get back and uh, down towards that uh, monthly pivot, which again, it'd be good to see that uh, out of the way sooner rather than later. Okay, Canadian dollar, which always I, I click on the oil price first and see what's going on because when the Canadian dollar, okay, oil's uh, had a little bounce yesterday, so it's uh, coming back up towards that 38 barrel dollar barrel. Um, okay, let's have a look at Canadian dollar. Oddly, 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 it's just not really had much of an effect on the Canadian dollar immediately. Um, looking at where we are, it's uh, to me, it just looks like it may have more mileage to the upside yet. Uh, just consolidating uh, on the monthly pivot there. And with the higher lows, higher highs, the trend certainly seems to be towards the upside and that uh, R1 could be quite a nice target with yesterday's lows if it breaks through the 6021s. So just need to get it through that 6021 and uh, we could be pushing up there back to the yesterday's highs. Okay, news wise today, there's not a, a significant amount of news today. We've got, as I said, really the biggest thing is the minutes later on and we have got a speaker at uh, 520, uh, one of the Fed uh, speakers. Uh, crude oil inventories may give us a kicker at 3.30 this afternoon. Uh, and particularly if you're looking at Canadian dollar, it may give a bit more of a kick there if the oil price starts flicking around a little bit based on those. Okay, nothing else much to report, so I uh, hope you have a great day. Bye for now.